So they will say, ah yes, beyond Krishna, higher than Krishna, there is uh, nothing, no truth, nothing. And so it is to that no truth that we should aspire to attain. That absolute nothingness. That's what Krishna means to say. This is nonsense speculation. Yeah? And when does this imagination lead, lead, lead to Sahajian mentality? Well, Sahajian mentality is an outgrowth of Mayavari philosophy. Outgrowth? Yeah, grows out of. It is just a certain variety of Mayavari philosophy. The, the, the difference would be that these, what we would call the classical Mayavadis who follow Shankaracharya. Then they accept that the senses must be rigidly controlled. But the Sahajas say, why? You see, if everything is God, or on the other side, if everything is illusion, then it makes no difference if the senses are controlled or not. So the same thing then, you can do anything to achieve God. So they have this idea that uh, Krishna is manifest as every male human being and Radharani is manifest as every female human being. And one attains this, this Madhura Rasa, the love affair between Radha and Krishna, by ordinary illicit sex. Mm -hmm. So, you see, this is a form of Mayavadi philosophy. Because the Mayavadis also say, we're all God. So the Sahajas just fine-tune this philosophy for sense gratification. At least the traditional Mayavadis follow Shankaracharya. Yeah, they say to achieve Brahman, then all sense activities have to stop. Of course, they take that to such an extreme. Because they don't know about positive sense engagement. So they take that negation philosophy to such an extreme that it actually creates the Mayavari alternative, uh, sorry, the Sahaja alternative. Because it is possible, impossible to, to just absolutely restrict the senses. Mm. So then these sahajas, they, they give a, a, a most perverted sort of outlet <coughs> to the senses. In the name of spiritual life. Hmm. Yes? Isn't it some kind of Mayavad or the Sahajiya manifestation? 
Yeah, well, you know, this is, <laughs> this is very arrogant uh, to presume that uh, Krishna will reveal himself to us uh, for, because of our own made-up idea of love. Mm. We see in this, we were mentioning, it wasn't last night, it was in the farm, how uh, in the end of Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna is speaking to Arjuna about him, how he should surrender to him. And these are the Lord's instructions of love to Arjuna. Krishna says about this instruction, Savaguyatamam, that this is the most secret of all secrets. So it is revealed by Krishna to Arjuna. Huh? And he tells Arjuna, I'm speaking like this to you because you are my most dear friend. Yeah, so, Bhakti Yoga is revealed in this way. It comes down Guru Parampara, this line, it's a disciplic line of those who are confidentially connected to Krishna. Mm -hmm. These are pure devotees of the Lord. Uh, so if someone who has just had the fortune to somehow bump into Krishna consciousness in his lifetime, and then he's imagining that he can, uh, you know, concoct some uh, some definition of love of Krishna. That totally disregards what Krishna has revealed through the Guru Parampara. Then what this is doing is saying that Krishna is cheap. I can think of anything. And this obliges, you know, as long as it's in the name of Krishna, then this obliges Krishna to me. You see? And again, this is what sahajas do. You see, they do any nonsense thing. Uh, uh, they say, for example, that yes, we are vegetarian. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we also are eating uh, the, the fruit of the Ganga. Ganga pal, they call it. Which means fish. But they have, by their concoction, defined fish as a fruit. And then they sprinkle tulsi on the fish and offer it to the deity. Uh, and then they take the prasad. And they expect, because you know, of their concoction, that Krishna will actually enter into the fish. And it will actually be prasada. Now why is Krishna forced to do that? <laughs> now how can they be so arrogant to think? They make up a word, Gangapal. They say that fish is a fruit. And they put tulsi on it. <laughs> and this is going to make Krishna enter into the fish. You see, this is absurd. But this is how they think. So they think that their mental speculation is stronger than Krishna. But no, <laughs> it is not. And Srila Prabhupada says, by the Mayavari, you know, by their concocted form of devotional service, they just open the way to hell. 
te wszystkie swoje wewnętrzne. Oni otwierają ścieżkę do piekła. I said Mayavadi, but I meant to say Sahajya. But anyway, Sahajyas are kind of Mayavadi. So. so anyway, by their mental speculation, they simply go to hell. Yeah, so you see, this is, this is arrogance. Vaishnava is humble. And humble means that he accepts Krishna's instructions as it is, as they are. As they come down through Guru Parampara and uh, all right, so a devotee, uh, you know, a, a devotee who's still affected by modes of nature may not be able to follow these instructions fully. But then, he, humbly, he will say, yeah, I'm, I'm not very well situated in, in devotional service. I'm not up to the standard. Uh, uh, but only someone very arrogant will say that my poor standard of devotional service is actually Krishna Prema. Yes, I'm not following the four regular principles. Because I don't have to. Because I'm in Krishna Prem. Only a nonsense will say that. Okay, that's the bell for stopping the class. Srila Prabhupada Gija. Maharaj.